the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Before we join the great Gildersleeve tonight, just a word about a new and exciting Kraft product. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those other wonderful Kraft products. Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new salad oil. It's a new kind of oil, a lighter-bodied oil designed to mix smoothly and perfectly with all the other ingredients you use in your homemade salad dressings, your delicious chiffon cakes... In fact, in every recipe you have that calls for liquid shortening. The reason Kraft Salad Oil is a lighter-bodied oil is that it's made by a special process created by Kraft called superfining. The first time you try this wonderful new lighter-bodied superfined salad oil, you'll know you've discovered something really new, really wonderful. So don't wait. Get Kraft Salad Oil tomorrow. This is a red-letter day at the great Gildersleeve's house. Big things are about to happen. How can you tell? Just look at little Leroy. at 6 o'clock in the morning, and he's out of bed and heading into his uncle's room. Hey, Uncle, wake up. Come on, wake up. Huh? You, this You love you. You, 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 It's time to get up. Let's get going. Leroy, it's not time to get up. Stop shaking me and go back to bed. Back to bed? Nothing. We gotta get going. The day we leave on our vacation. Vacation? Oh, my goodness. Call the family. Get everybody up. We gotta get an early start. Yes, sir, there's no time to be lost on vacation day. 6 30 in the morning, and the water commissioner has taken the car to the service station, had it filled with gas and oil, and is on his way home for the grand departure. By George, it's beautiful at this time in the morning. Prettiest time of the day. I look. The man ought to get up early every morning. I didn't... Oop. There's the judge out in his front porch. What's the old goat doing up this early? Hello, Judge. Well, good morning, Gilda. What are you, the early bird looking for a worm? <laughs> <laughs> It's not early, Judge. I've been up almost an hour. So have I. Morning is my time to work in the garden. Why don't you come and see my cucumbers? Yeah, I haven't time, Judge. Just stop by to say goodbye. We're leaving on our vacation this morning. Eight o'clock sharp. Oh, so this is the day. Uh, you bet. Bertie's going to Kansas City to visit her sister. And I'm taking Marjorie and Bronco, Leroy and the twins, up to Half Moon Lake. I've rented a cabin and everything. Well, isn't that nice? I admire your courage, Gilde, taking the whole family. Your courage? It's quite a chore, transporting the babies and all. Yeah, not for me, it isn't, Judge. I have this whole trip planned. I'm running it on a timetable. Oh? Certainly. I didn't leave anything to the last minute. All the details were taken care of days ago. We have a little bed for the twins that goes in the back seat of the car. All I have to do is go home, load in the suitcases, get the little family aboard, and we're off. Slick as a whistle. Do you have your road maps? Sunglasses? Yo, I have everything, Judge. A trip like this is no problem at all if you know how to organize it. And believe me, I've organized it. At five minutes of eight, we'll be locking the house. At eight o'clock, straight up, I step on the starter and off we go. It's all a matter of planning. Certainly sounds efficient, Gilday. Well, you know me, Judge. I don't forget a thing. By the way, Gilday, where's your hat? Your hat? Oop, left it back at the gas station. See you later, Judge. Bye. Catch a fish for me. You want some more hot coffee, Mr. Gillsleeve? Last call. Well, just a little more, Bertie. This is the last of the hot stuff. The man's outside waiting to shut off the gas. Well, good. Everybody's right on time. 
You see how smoothly things go when you have a system? I had all these things planned, Bertie. We sure are clicking. <laughs> this house is buzzing like a beehive. Well, that's because the head bee is on the job. Uh, all your things packed, Bertie? Yes, sir, Bertie's all packed and my suitcase is on the stoop. Train leaves at 8.30. Well, good. Quarter of eight, Uncle. Let's get going. Yeah, take your time, my boy. We're on schedule. As soon as I gather up the suitcases, we can start loading the car. Oh, heck, I'm loading it already. Where's a piece of cloth? The cloth? Yeah, I'm going to have a flag on the end of my fish pole. Sticks out about ten feet behind the car. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. We can't carry that fish pole. Well, how am I going to fish? Yeah, we'll find a pole when we get there. Now, take it out of the car. Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> you got that little problem settled. Marjorie! Bronco! Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Bring the suitcases. Let's start loading. Well, here we are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ready to go. Yeah, great. Tuck them in the car, Bronco. Bronco, I need the brown suitcase. Marjorie, it's loading time. We have to leave in ten minutes. Well, I can't leave yet, Uncle. I have to bathe the twins. Bathe the twins? It's almost eight o'clock. Oh, my goodness. Well, it shouldn't take more than five minutes to give little Ronnie and Linda a bath. We were still on schedule. Almost. Marjorie, it's ten after eight. We'll be right there, Auntie. I got everything put away in the kitchen, Mr. Gilsey. Yeah, good for you, Bertie. As soon as Marjorie comes down with the twins, we'll be off. Uh, ten minutes late. That's not too bad. Well, we're all ready, Anki. Uh, where are the babies? Well, Bronco's rocking them a little. I'd like to have them asleep before we put them in the car. Oh, good. Yeah, I've got everything rolling now. We'll stow things in the car and get Leroy. Where is Leroy? He was here a minute ago. Uh, that boy. Yeah, I'll go out on the front porch and call him. Leroy! Leroy! Can't go yet. You woke the babies up. I did. Keep your voice down, Leroy. We'll be on the road as soon as the twins are asleep. Put all your things in the car. I'll go get my turtle. We're not taking that turtle. Half Moon Lake is full of turtles. That's why I'm taking him. He needs company. No turtles in the car. Well, what do I do with him? I can't leave him in the basket. Put him outside. Quiet down there. We'll never get the babies to sleep. Put him outside. Okay. Yeah. Things are still going all right. If we get away by 8.30, that isn't so bad. Mr. Gilsey, my suitcase is on the stoop. I'm ready. Well, that's fine, Bert. My train leaves in 10 minutes. I don't mean to rush you, but I only got 10 minutes, and we're going to get to the train. Oh, I forgot. I have to take you to the train. Be quick, in the car, Bertie. I kissed the babies and said goodbye to Miss Marge and Mr. Bronco. I think I got everything. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Come on. Hey! Run for the car, Bertie. <laughs> well, I got Bertie off all right. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, nine o'clock. Well, by George, we'll get started now. Marge will have the twins asleep. We'll put their bed in the car and take off. Mm, one hour late. Well, it could be worse. Shouldn't take more than a minute to load the car. Margie! I mean, Marjorie! Everybody! Let's go! We'll have to wait a couple of minutes, Anki. Now what? Well, Bronco had to go down to the drugstore. We're out of the baby's formula. Yoper. Margie, why didn't you think of these things before? You don't see me leaving things to the last minute. Where are we going to go, Unc? In a minute, Leroy. The gas man was looking for you. He wanted to know if you'd closed up all the vents on the furnace. He answered the furnace. He... Yo, brother. Hey, Margie, you start loading things in the car while I go down in the basement. What's the matter, Unc? Did you forget something? Leroy, go help your sister. I'd rather help you. Yeah, big help. <laughs> Yeah. 
You. You. Darn, Phyllis. I thought we were leaving at 8 o'clock. Yeah, never mind. Get these vents closed up and then confounded we're going. Bronco's home. I heard his big feet upstairs. Oh, good. He and Marjorie will have the car loaded in no time. We'll be on our way. It's only a quarter to ten. We're not doing so bad. I'll go up and put the last of my stuff in the car, Unc. As soon as you finish, we can take off. You're oh, fine, my boy. Now the family's clicking. We'll be on the road in five minutes. <laughs> Ready, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yep. As soon as I get my hat and lock up the house. We got everything in the car, Unc. Boy, is it riding low. Looks like a hot rod. Yes, yes. I won't put the twins in the car until the very last, Unc. It's a good idea. Getting started on a trip isn't any problem when you get things organized. Where are the keys to the house? Well, I have them. All the doors are locked except the front. Great. Well, let's go out. You and I and Leroy will get in the car and... Bronco can bring the twins. Now, don't wake them up, Bronco. No, no, I won't. Oh, boy, here we go. Yeah, you bet. Gosh, Unc, when do you see how I got the car fixed? Yeah, that's fine, my boy. How do you like the car, Unc? Some packing job, huh? I did a... Oh, brother, it is loaded. <laughs> Who put the box on the floor in the back? That's mine. Couldn't hang it on the radiator. You know, Marjorie, couldn't you put some of these things in the trunk? The trunk's full, Unky. Well, here we are. The whole family. Open the door, Leroy. Well, the bed for the twins and back is all right. But where are the rest of us going to sit? Well, I could sit in back with the twins and Marge could sit up in front. Well, that'll make Leroy and me in a suitcase. Well, where am I going to sit? Somebody has to drive the car. But couldn't you put the suitcases on the floor? Yeah, there are two suitcases down there already. Where'd all this junk come from? Well, they're the things we absolutely need, Uncle. Yeah, maybe if I sat in the front and... No, that wouldn't work. Well, I have to sit in the back with the babies, but there isn't room for you in front. What if Leroy sat next to... No, the suitcase is there. Uh, let's face it. We can get everything we need in the car but us. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. It's lighter bodied. It's super fined. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft salad dressing products. The first time you use Kraft Salad Oil in one of your own homemade salad dressings or in one of those big, beautiful chiffon cakes you make, or in any recipe that calls for liquid shortening, you'll know you've found a treasure. For Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new salad oil. It's a new kind of salad oil, a lighter-bodied salad oil that blends perfectly with other ingredients. That's because Kraft Salad Oil is a super-fine salad oil. Yes, super-fine by a special process created by Kraft. Because it's super-fine, it's lighter-bodied. Because it's lighter-bodied, it blends new magic into your salad dressing, baking, and cooking masterpieces. So don't wait to try this new Kraft salad oil. Remember, it's lighter-bodied. It's super fine. Get Kraft salad oil tomorrow at your grocer's. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve started out this morning with high hopes. This is the day the water commissioner begins his vacation. And he had it all arranged for the family to be in the car and rolling toward Half Moon Lake by 8 o'clock. Uh, how are things going? Well, it's almost noon, and they're not rolling yet. You unfounded suitcases. Leroy, see if that box will go in the back in the trunk. Are you kidding? There's stuff hanging out over the bumper now. We put wheels on it, we got a trailer. Well, put it on the floor in the back seat. That's where it was. You're all right, put it there again. Suffer 
when cats take stuff out, put stuff back. Unc, do you know what you're doing? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go in the house and see what Marjorie and Bronco are doing. Why don't we just leave them? We got to do something. At 8.30, I had everything ready to go. Come on in the house, Leroy. You think we ought to go back in? We're losing ground. Yeah, maybe I can talk Marjorie out of some of that junk she's taking. You think we were going to Greenland? Yeah. Did you get things rearranged in the car, Auntie? Sure, we got them rearranged. We took them all out, all out and we put them all back in. Why can't we go? Marjorie, I figured every conceivable arrangement. There simply isn't room for all that luggage in the car with four people and two babies. Darn babies. Leroy, what are we taking them to the lake for? They can't fish. <laughs> Maybe we could have the luggage sent up on the train. No, no, there's no railroad anywhere near the lake. No bus service either. If we could just take something out of those suitcases and consolidate it. I told you, Anki, I'm only taking the absolute essentials. We have to have clothes. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we wear all the clothes? <laughs> then we won't need any suitcases at all oh, Leroy, you're no help Well, I'm trying Gee, aren't we ever gonna go? 11.30 you, What a family Oh, I'll have to feed the babies again Bronco, see if there's enough hot water to warm some milk Holy cow, why don't just you and I go, Unc? Babies, milk, suitcases This could take all summer You don't tempt me, Leroy <laughs> there has to be a way to work this out. You stay here and keep an eye on things. I'm going to run down to Peavy's drugstore. I need a strong cigar. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? You can give me the longest, blackest cigar you have, Peavy. That's quite an order for a man starting on his vacation. The judge was in, said you and the family had left at 8 o'clock this morning. We haven't left yet. Yes, I see. You know, I've never seen anything like it, Peavy. Just try to get four people and two babies started on a trip. I know what you mean, Mr. Gillespie. Mrs. Peavy and I planned a vacation one year. We were going to leave one Friday morning. You know, Friday morning, bright and early, I was sitting in the car waiting for Mrs. Peavy. Uh, did you get started before noon? I sat in the car until 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Well, that's not so bad. Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that can't happen to me, Peavy. The car's so loaded down, there isn't even room for me to sit. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to do it. The car just isn't big enough. I need a bus. Mr. Gildersleeve, have you ever thought of taking the family up to the lake in shifts? Taking up in shifts? What do you mean? Well, Mrs. Peavy's sister had a large family, and when they travel from one place to another, the husband takes them in sections. He delivers one carload and, and comes back for another. Say, that's an idea. Of course, it makes a lot of driving, but I guess when a man has a big family, he likes to keep moving. You by George Peavy. You know, I think you've hit something. Yeah, I'll take part of the family up to the lake. Then come back and pick up the rest. Yes, sir, that solves the problem. Yeah, I'm glad I can help you out. In fact, I feel so good, Peavy, I won't need the cigar. Well, hadn't you better take it along, just in case? No, nope. problem is solved. You're a fine fellow, Peavy. I'm certainly selling cigars. <laughs> <laughs> well, see you later, Peavy. Uh, have a nice vacation. Marjorie, Bronco, Leroy, I have it figured out. Are we going, Unc? Can we leave? You bet. Uh, you call me, Mr. Gildersleeve? What is it, Unky? Well, I've worked out a plan, kiddies, how we can get to the lake. Very simple. We'll go up in shifts. Shifts? Certainly. I'll take you and the babies and the luggage up in one load. Then I'll come back tonight, and Bronco and Leroy and I will come up in the morning. No, Leroy, wait. No, I don't think that'll work, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Well, that'd leave Marge and the twins up there alone all night. Oh, yes. yes. It would, wouldn't it? Why don't Bronco and I go up and you come back for Marge and the twins in the morning? Well, that'd leave Marge alone down here. Yeah, that's no good either. 
Yeah, I could take Leroy up and come back in the morning. Well, that'd leave Leroy up there alone tomorrow. That's keen. <laughs> well, I could bring Leroy back. Then we're all back here again. You're a princess. <laughs> yeah, there must be some way this family can get to the lake. Unky, why don't you and Leroy go up and stay for a week or two and then come back, and Bronco and I'll go up for a couple of weeks? Hey, that's a swell idea. Let's go, huh? No, just a minute. Just a minute. It's very generous of you, Marjorie. But you and Bronco are the ones who need the vacation. What about me? I'm a tired little kid. <laughs> Either way, Marge and I can go up first. It's all right with us. Well, somebody has to go. Holy cow. Well, we have to do something. What you getting sore about? Yeah, children, children, please. This is a vacation. You, Marjorie and Bronco, you take the twins in the car and you go. What about me? <laughs> no, Mr. Gildersleeve. You and Leroy go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we just can't split the family up, that's all. If we can't all go, we won't go at all. You said we were going. Yeah. <laughs> what a vacation. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait. Look, I have an idea. I think we're all hungry. You're hungry, aren't you, Leroy? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> all right, then. Let's take the twins. We'll pile in the car, and we'll go down to John's drive-in. After we've had some lunch, we'll all feel better. What do you say? Yeah, not a bad idea. I can never think on an empty stomach. Well, I think it's the best suggestion we've had all day. You open the door, Bronco, and I'll bring the twins. Sure. Oh, we'll all feel better after we've eaten. That's right, my boy, we will. Can I help you, Marge? It's down to Open the back door of the car, and I'll put them on their bed. Gee whiz. Now, Leroy, be a little soldier. Yeah. Now the blankets. Ah, there they are. Now that bed is just right for the twins. Babies. Now how are we going to get in, Anki? Well, now let's see. Uh, you get in the back next to the babies. I'll have to climb over these things on the floor. Well, let's open the door on the other side. No, don't do that. Everything on that side will fall out. <laughs> Why don't we cut a hole in the top? <laughs> like getting into a submarine. Ew. Next year, I'm going to spend my vacation at the Elks Club. <laughs> Climb in, Marge. I'll give you a hand. Now, be careful. Don't wake the twins. Don't wake the twins. Hello, down there. Yelper, the judge again. That's all we need, an old goat. <laughs> well, I thought you were leaving at 8 o'clock, Gilda. What happened? We were delayed. <laughs> Stand back, judge. Be quiet or you'll wake the twins. Hello, Bronco. Be right. Hello, judge. Hi. Judge, we're trying to get in the car. Is that Marjorie in there? Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Judge, you're going to wake up the babies. Look at them in there on their little bed. Aren't they dear? Judge, we're trying to get in the car. This reminds me of my grandfather's story of how they came across the plains in a covered wagon. Oh, my goodness. It was pulled by oxen. <laughs> Very interesting, Judge. Now, if you don't mind, we'd better go. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, have a nice time at the lake. We're not going to the lake. What's this? Well, we haven't figured out how to get everybody up there. We were just going down to the drive-in lunch stand. Not much of a vacation. We're going to eat, Judge. Oh. Well, I have to be on my way. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Judge. Yeah, let's go now. I don't want to go to the drive-in. I've lost my appetite. Leroy in the car. Where am I going to sit? In the glove compartment? <laughs> well, it isn't far to the drive-in. Leroy, you sit up in front in Bronco's lap. Do I have to? <sighs> Come on, little brother-in-law. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting here. Yeah. Now, Don't you, step. I need to ease suitcases. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Everybody settled? All right, back here. I'm squished. <laughs> well, I don't know how we did it, but hold tight. Well, everybody comfortable? Yeah, I'm very comfortable. Say, kiddies, I have a great idea. Yeah? We're in the car. Babies, luggage... Why stop at the drive-in? Why don't we keep right on going to the lake? Hey, let's! Oh, it's fine with me. Let's go! Sure, all the family together. That's the way it should be. 
Half Moon Lake, here we come. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. For many, many a stormy wind, the glory jack comes home again. Sailing, sailing. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Tomorrow, at your grocer's, remember to pick up a pint or quart bottle of wonderful new Kraft Salad Oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those other wonderful Kraft Salad Dressing products. Try this new salad oil in your homemade salad dressings, your baking, your cooking. It's lighter bodied because it's super fine. Get Kraft Salad Oil. Well, the good old summer Tim is with us again, folks. You know, I had a heck of a time getting the little family started on our vacation. We were on our way. And before we settled down at Half Moon Lake for our annual summer away from Summerfield. I want to take a moment to thank all the people who are behind the scenes year after year to bring you the Great Gildersleeve program. Incidentally, this completes the 10th year of the Great Gildersleeve. First of all, there's our little family. Walter Tetley. I'm Leroy. Mary Lee Robb. I'm Marjorie. And Lillian Randolph. Birdie. There's Marjorie's husband, Bronco, who's played by... Dick Crenna. And Lee Keel is both of the twins. <laughs> <laughs> Earl Ross As Judge Hooker Has been with us since the program began And Dick Legrand created the character of Mr. Phoebe years and years ago Well, now, I went Yeah, yes, I guess I would, too <laughs> well, Our two fine announcers are John Heaston and Jim Doyle Our consistently amazing and always brilliant scripts are written by John Elliott, Andy White, and Paul West Thank you, fellas. The musical bridges and backgrounds are composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Sound effects, as usual, have been created by Monty Frazier, and Ray Ferguson is our engineer. The show is directed by Frank Pittman. Virgil Reimer represents NBC. Our wonderful sponsor, of course, is the Kraft Food Company. We'd like to thank Kraft and all these other people for their contributions. And we want to thank all of you in the audience wrote us so many nice letters this past season. We hope to see you all again in September. Please watch your newspaper for the details. Till then, this is Willard Waterman saying, have a fine summer, and good night all. What's your favorite sandwich? Hot beef or pork? Cold cuts? Bologna? Liver sausage? Cheese? Well, whatever it is, remember this. If you add a little mustard, you'll add a lot of tang. Yes, a little mustard makes every bite taste better, particularly if it's Kraft's prepared mustard. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. And remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Starting next Wednesday night at the same time and on the same network, Kraft will bring you the intriguing and popular mystery show, The Falcon, the story of a daring freelance detective. Listen next Wednesday night when the Falcon solves the case of the Proud Papa. Laugh with Groucho. He's next on...